Hello, and welcome to Healed and Restored. I'm your host, Elsa Spady. My desire for this podcast is that it will continue to be a blessing and a beacon of light to all our brothers and sisters in Christ who find themselves going through a tough season in their lives. This is a special community where you can tune in and find encouragement. Here you can let your guards down and be assured that you are never alone in your suffering. On this episode, my guest and I will be talking about the transformation through suffering. Sooner or later, we all realize the suffering is part of life. If we allow it, our pain can coexist with God's peace. He can use our experiences to draw us closer to Him and to save souls. That being said, let's look at the two options we have in regards to how we can react to our sufferings as believers. First option, we can unite our suffering to that of our Lord Jesus Christ, which means we can bring everything to the foot of the cross and tell Him, Dear Lord, Thy will be done in all things. Our second option, we can leave God out of the equation and suffer without Him. In other words, suffer without having Him by our sides, helping us carry our crosses on a daily basis. My guest today is someone who has chosen to suffer with God by her side and hang tight to his promise that he would never leave us or forsake us. Joanne Jamsik has become a dear friend, someone I admire and respect. Joanne is also one of the many women who came forward with the desire to help with the mission of Healed and Restored. Joanne, along with Alexandra Stanley, and now Queen Austin Darp, are the heads of the ministry show's social media platform. Thank God for these young women with hearts of service that are bringing all of their background knowledge in social media to serve Healed and Restored in this way. There are no words to express my gratitude to them. While putting together the new program we are hosting at St. Mark Catholic Church in Huntersville, Healed and Restored, Growth and Empowering Journey for All Women, Joanne was one of the women who said yes to help and be a speaker on one of the topics. So last month, we had the pleasure of having Joanne kickstart the program and speak to the women on the topic of transformation through suffering. Her talk was very inspiring and well-received by the women attending. So I thought, why not bring her talk to you on the podcast? Joanne has a Master of Arts in Christian Counseling from the Gordon Conwell Theological Seminary. She's a licensed professional counselor in the state of South Carolina, where she resides. And Joanne is also a national certified counselor. Hello, sweet Joanne. Welcome to Healed and Restored. It is such a pleasure to have you with me today. Good morning, Elza, and it's a pleasure to be here with you on the show. Thank you. I'm so excited. I can't not wait for our conversation because I know it's such an important one, you know, to help people understand that even though suffering is inevitable, we're all going to suffer. But when we have others that can join that walk with us, especially when we know that God is walking with us, 
then um, that suffering is lessened, right? I mean, our pain is not as as um, as overtaken. So, before we start, please tell right. our listeners a little bit about yourself. Sure. Well, I just want to say before I share more about myself is that you know going through some of the just the health issues and things I've faced over the last four plus years, it would be easy to tell people about myself through that lens. You know, I'm Joanne and kind of here's what I'm going through because I think going through suffering, sometimes our identity is shaken. We forget like who we are and the other things about us that are still true when we go through hard times. So um, I will say I... Uh, I grew up in Charlotte, and I went to St. Anne's Catholic um, School for elementary and middle, and then I went to Charlotte Catholic for high school. Okay. I um, I loved and will still love to dance, so that was a huge part of my life. I started dancing when I was three and was really fortunate to be able to do some semi-professional dancing in college and after college. I was in youth ministry for nine years, um, and during that time was when I decided to go to seminary because I just really wanted to help people beyond what I felt like I was able to do when I was in ministry, and so I wanted to develop a skill set and just build on what I had been experiencing through working in youth ministry and um, be able to help people or people to a greater extent. So I do have a heart for helping people and hearing their stories. I also love to sing. I'm on the worship team at my church here in Charleston, South Carolina. So just that creative side of me um, really energizes me. And yeah, I live in Charleston, South Carolina now. I absolutely love the beach and... Mm. It's a place where I feel like I can breathe and mm. surrender and I can relate. Water. I can relate. I, the beach is my favorite place too. Oh, it's it's just wonderful. Mm. It really, really is. And so those are some of my some of my you know favorite things. And my relationships are very important to me. Just being connected with women and and friends and and with family mm. uh, has that. That definitely has gotten me through a lot mm-hmm. in what I've been going through. So I can tell. I can tell. That's a little bit about me. Well, thank you for sharing all of that. Yeah, you have a heart of gold. I've told you that many times, and I really think you have a mm-hmm. heart, a very compassionate heart. And um, I truly believe that women can help other women heal. But it takes yeah. a certain type of women. It takes you knowing that you first need to find your own healing um, so that you can move on and be able to help others. And I think you understand that very well because it is very important to understand that. So thank you. Um, Well, I love to hear the details on why people do what they do, especially when it comes to the causes they choose to help with. What was it about Healed and Restored, the ministry, that got you attention and let you to join us on this important mission? Thank you. Well, it's actually just so interesting in a God story. Um, I know Catherine Farley, who's on your foundational Mm -hmm. team. Yes. And I was at a friend's apartment in Charlotte, and I was upstairs, and they have a little studio, and so I just went up there to kind of dance a little bit, listen to worship music, and I feel like going through suffering, sometimes we lose our sense of purpose. Hmm. and I knew I was feeling that way. I just, what do I have to offer? And I felt like I had somewhat of a vision for where the Lord, you know, where I felt like He was leading me, but I couldn't force it. I could not make something happen. Mm -hmm. And I do like to write, and I felt like speaking was something that the Lord was nudging me for the future. And so that day I was praying about those 
specific opportunities. I come downstairs and I get a text from Catherine and she says, Joanne, I thought of you today. I was talking with Elsa and about just some of your writing and wondered if you would be, you know, interested in coming alongside of the ministry and especially oh. helping women who've gone through trauma and sexual trauma and abuse and are just feeling in a broken place and uh, would you be willing to do some writing for us and possibly down the road speak at some workshops? And it was just, mm. I mean, within hours, I felt like the Lord. Oh my gosh, I got the chills right up and down my spine because I love the backstory. And I was, I it didn't, I didn't even hesitate. Mm. I was like, yes. And also because of my counseling background and because of the trauma that I've experienced, I felt like, you know what better way to serve women than to not only be able to feel like I was being purposeful and helping with the ministry, but also down the road, being able to enter into that space with women and and bring my experience to the table, but also meaning my personal experience with what I've been through, but also, you know, I am still a counselor. I have not been able to work for over four years, but I have to remember that like, I am still a counselor. Yes, you and are. And you have a lot to offer, and you have, a, you know, your background and everything that you have gone through has only made you even more qualified. You have to remember that, you know. So uh, thank you. Thank you for sharing that backstory. We're going to take our first break, and we're going to come right back, okay? Thank you. Carolina Catholic Radio is your local EWTN parish and community connection, bringing you local news and information from over 100 parishes in the Charlotte Diocese and Rock Hill Oratory. Catch the spirit. Preferably consider a tax-deductible donation today at carolinacatholicradio.org. Hello, this is Carolyn Klicka, relationship coach with Abounding Joy, a new feature on Carolina Catholic Radio. Our marriage and other relationships are so important to our peace and happiness. Are you struggling with conflicts that just continue to escalate? Are you dealing with anger, fear, or just feel like you need to find new solutions? I'll share some godly principles on how you can resolve relationship and inner conflicts, create agreements, and move into the peace and joy that God wants for you. Discover greater freedom and He through insights about the truth of who we are and what God is asking of us. Join me daily for two minutes of insight and encouragement for your heart and your relationships. This is Carolyn Klicka with Abounding Joy. Visit me at AboundingJoyMinistry.com. Listen in and discover why today I choose joy. If you had the chance to sit down for 10 minutes with the world's greatest teacher, Would you take it? One Minute Monk, Abbot Placid Solari of Belmont Abbey. If you said yes, you're in luck. Go take out your Bible, and you can spend 10 minutes or even more with the Spirit of the Living God. Who is a better teacher or greater expert than the Holy Spirit? In his rule, St. Benedict sends us to the Bible every day, and it's free. 2 Timothy tells us all Scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for refutation, for correction, and for training in righteousness. If we truly believe that the Bible is God's inspired word, what holds us back from turning to it each day? For your free copy of The Rule of St. Benedict, visit OneMinuteMonk.com, O-N-E, MinuteMonk.com. If we truly believe that the Bible is God's inspired word, what holds us back from turning to it each day? The Carolina Catholic Radio Network, a proud affiliate of EWTN Radio, has now been on the air, on the internet, and on your smartphone for two and a half years, with many wonderful local programs to educate, inform, and inspire you on your journey of faith. With the negative impact of secular media in our culture, the positive impact of our Carolina Catholic Apostolate is needed now more than ever to evangelize the truth of Jesus Christ and our Catholic faith to guide us in daily life. Carolina Catholic has many awesome plans for you across our six platforms this fall. In the weeks ahead, we will begin to share our plans as we secure your financial support to make them a reality. 
please consider a one-time donation or monthly tithe today. Just go to the Donate tab on carolinacatholicradio.org. Thank you for your prayerful consideration to join us in our mission to evangelize across the Carolinas. May God bless you abundantly. Welcome back to Healed and Restored. I'm Elsa Spady, your host, and today I have with me my dear friend, Joanne Jemsik, on the phone, and we're talking about transformation through suffering. And Joanne, before we went on break, you were talking about how you had this God moment. You were basically crying out to God and saying, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing with all of this. I want to use this for the good of someone else. Your desire, obviously, and all our good things come from him. So he planted that in your soul already, right? So he was he was basically um tended to your soil. And then Catherine comes over and she nudges you. And I feel like that's the Holy Spirit right there. And then you were open to it because you had been already um, praying for this, and you said, yes, Lord, whatever you want me to do, just show me your way. I love that, and I love when you can talk yeah. about it and put your finger on it and say, this is how it happened, when it happened, because a lot of people are not paying attention to the movement of the Spirit in their lives. And that's a right. perfect example right there of how you were paying attention. You know, so thank you, and thank you for right. you. Yes, you have... You have just added so much to our team, you know, and just mm. just your personal experience, your background, your personality, everything about you just resonates a lot of peace, a lot of love, um, unconditional love, and a lot of compassion. And that's uh, those things are things that I feel are so important for us to have within this ministry. Because God right. knows we're going to be dealing with the very broken. We already have, but it's only going to mm. get deeper, right? As we get go deeper into this ministry, we are going to be helping the very broken. And if we don't bring God's love and God's compassion, first and foremost, there's no way we can help in that healing. Don't you agree? I do agree. I do. You know. And I realize, you know, going through suffering without faith and without support is, I, you know, we say, oh, I don't know how, how people do it, right? Mm-hmm. Because I think just our, well, my faith, even though it has struggled through this process, it's still been an anchor for me and clinging to God's promises, and there's a reason to hope. We have a bigger picture in mind exactly. when we can look at it from a, a biblical point of view. It's, and so I agree with you, absolutely. Yeah, and I think that uh, we have to always keep in mind that God himself told us that we would have tribulations mm-hmm. in this world. But I don't believe he said that to scare us. I truly believe he said that to prepare us, you know, Mm -hmm. to set us out and say, okay, yeah, you are going to encounter sufferings, trauma, problems, um, disagreements, all of that stuff. But fear not, I have overcome the world. And he wants Mm -hmm. us to know that he's in control. So therefore, I think that yeah. when we when we hold on to these promises that He made to us, that He makes to us every day, we can go through anything because we know our strength comes from Him. It's not something we have, you know. It's Him who provides that, you know. But if we don't bring Him along and ask Him to come in and give us the graces, then that's when we say, 
wow, how can you do that? How can you go through such and such without having your faith? I always think of that because I think it's difficult with God. It must be almost impossible without him, right? Yes. So, yes. but um, let's let's keep going. And actually, before we go into to the topic at hand, I like to ask this question that I ask every single one of my um, guests now. What was, what, t- let's talk about a, a wisdom or an advice that someone has given you that has stuck with you, that you can say this is one of the best advice I've ever received from anyone. Mm. It's a great question, Elsa. And you know, as I think about that, I mean, I what keeps coming in my head is not something that is. I mean, there's several things, but just just the word, and it wasn't one person who gave it to me. Is just there is always hope, mm. and I had to cling to that, and I've had to cling to that so often that even when things seem hopeless, when we feel hopeless and things seem bleak, that there is always hope. And being just really real, there there is this option to try to end our pain in various ways, but it's like if I choose that route to somehow end my pain and I will never know, I will Mm -hmm. never get the opportunity to see what kind of future the Lord has for me. Yes. Because, you know, what we, God says we suffer, you know, these, you know, it's, he calls our sufferings, you know, light and momentary. It doesn't feel that way. Mm -hmm. But we have something that far outweighs the suffering. And so, you know, those things, and just kind of casting forward vision, you know, there's always hope you know, hang on in those darkest moments because you you need the opportunity to see how the Lord is going to work and create a future for you. And I also have just really been so, you know, I've been reminded when people say, why do you talk about just your struggles all the time? You know, because there's so much more to you than this. And like I mentioned in the beginning, that's, it's so easy to orient our identity around what we're going through and forget that there are so many things about us that are not connected to the suffering. And when people say, I still see Christ in you, I still see these gifts in you, it has really given me a lot of courage in those moments. So I can't pinpoint exactly one profound statement, but everything is kind of oriented around hope and kind of snapping me out of focusing inward on what's going on Mm -hmm. and keeping my focus outward. Which is beautiful. If that makes sense. Yes, (laughs) it does. It makes sense because, um, you know, without hope, we can get stuck. And that's, right. I think, a natural um, reflection of being who we are, you know. Um, so hope is so important, so, so important. And for that person who's listening to us right now who might be going through that really tough season in their lives and they're beginning to lose hope, you know, that's perfect what you just said. Just have hope. Have hope that right. tomorrow could be better. Right. One day and, at a time. Yeah. And hope when, you know, with what I've been through, I've you don't always feel hope, right? I don't feel hopeful. So in that moment, I have to choose hope. Yes. Yes. I have to choose it. Yes. I have to choose it because I know it's there, mm-hmm. even though I may not in that moment be feeling it and that's one thing that's been huge is my feelings have been you know they they're real but also they can 
lie to us Mm -hmm. when we attach thoughts to those feelings. Mm -hmm. And so I do agree hope is so important. And I shifted from a phase of feeling hopeful to having to choose it Mm -hmm. on a daily basis and having to have people remind me of it. I'm glad you said that. that, That's a sure. Yep. I'm glad you said that because everything is a choice. Right. Um, You know, you choose to have hope. Even though you might not be feeling hopeful, right. you still make the choice because that's how we have to do as human beings. Because our emotion and our emotions are so up and down, you know, and can really um, be detrimental to us if we just get stuck on emotions. So we have to right. be able to make decisions aside from our emotional feelings. Right. Otherwise, it would be a mess if we just did things that we felt like doing. I tell my kids sometimes that, you know, you got to do your chores. I don't feel like it. I I always come back with, oh, I'm so glad we don't live in a world that we just do stuff that we feel like doing. Can you imagine if mom and dad just didn't feel like being your parents one day and just took off? (laughs) You know, Mm -hmm. when they were seven and eight year olds, they would look at me like, you would do that? I'm, I would say, no, I would never do that. But can you imagine a world like that? We cannot live in the world that we just do stuff that we feel like doing. We have to do right. things that it's our responsibility. We have to do things because we ought to do things because they're good for us or they're good for others, you know. So that mm-hmm. that's the same thing. You have You know that hope is something that's good for you. It's good to have hope. Because hope helps you to get to the other side of any right. a- anything that you're going through. If you have a little bit of hope, a glimpse of hope, that gets you to the other side. So thank you for right. um, sharing that. And I do think it's a beautiful example of, of something that you picked up along the road. Yes, it wasn't told by you by one person, but it's a message that needs to be spread too. you know, have hope. Right. and choose to have hope on a daily basis. We're going to take one more break, and we're going to come right back. Thanks, Joanne. Okay. The Carolina Catholic Parish Portal is now open. You'll find a section for your parish with contact info and easy access to your parish website, YouTube, and Facebook page. Check out your parish portal today at carolinacatholicradio.org or the Carolina Catholic mobile app. This is Tammy Harris. I am the founder and executive director of the Ursus Institute. We fight human trafficking both locally and abroad. I'm also a parishioner at St. Gabriel Catholic Church in Charlotte, as well as the Respect Life Coordinator there. I urge you to check out my website, www.ursusinstitute.net, or to reach out to me personally at my email, tammy at ursusinstitute.net. Ursus is Latin for bear and is spelled U R. S-U-S. And my first name, Tammy, is T-A-M-M-Y. We're involved in many operations right now, such as opening a transitional home for survivors in Western North Carolina. We're involved in a documentary about our work and about the realities of human trafficking, both locally and abroad. We're also giving input into anti-human trafficking legislation, involved in intel operations and rescue operations. There's many other things I'd like to share with you, and there's many ways that you can get involved. So I urge you, please text me at 704-519-7901, email me at tammy at ursusinstitute.net, or check out our website, www.ursusinstitute.net. And again, Ursus is spelled U-R-S-U-S. And please be assured that this human trafficking nonprofit works against trafficking in a way that is aligned with Catholic social teaching. Thanks for your time, and I look forward to hearing from you. Hi, I'm Jean. And I'm Kathleen. Please join us every Wednesday at 5 for a brand new episode of our show, Joyful Echo. We absolutely love sharing this time with you. It goes so fast. Oh my goodness, yes. (laughs) We are so committed to praying to the Holy Spirit and seeing what He wants to do in all of our lives. That's right. Sometimes we're sharing scripture. Sometimes it's something about the saints. When time permits, we will share lovely recipes 
Yes, Kathleen will, because I'm not the best at that lately, but we want you to join us. And if you're new out there and you've not tuned in at five o'clock on Wednesday, please come and join us. Yes. And until then, we are praying for you. See you later, ladies. The Carolina Catholic Radio Network, a proud affiliate of EWTN Radio, is here to encourage and engage us to learn, love, and live our faith in these extraordinary times. We do this with six media platforms. Our audio can be heard on broadcast radio and internet streaming on our website, mobile app, Alexa, and TuneIn with FM quality sound heard anywhere in the world. Carolina Catholic has many awesome plans for you across our six platforms this fall. In the weeks ahead, we will begin to share our plans as we secure your financial support to make them a reality. Please consider a one-time donation or monthly tithe today. Just go to the Donate tab button on carolinacatholicradio.org. Carolina Catholic is needed now more than ever to evangelize the truth of Jesus Christ and our Catholic faith to guide us in daily life. Thank you for your prayerful consideration to join us and our mission across the Carolinas. May God bless you abundantly. Welcome back to Healed and Restored. I'm Elsa Spady, and today I have with me my dear friend, Joanne Jemsik, and we are talking about transformation through suffering. I think this is such an important topic to talk about. We have to remember that our sufferings can be transformational. That's what God wants to do with all of that. You know, yes, we're going to suffer. Yes, we're going to go through trials and tribulations but if we understand that God is with us and he's going to get us through those and by getting us through those sufferings he's going to transform us you know there shouldn't be any um any fear of what's to come we should we should just trust that whatever is to come God has promised us that he will be there with us Right, and I think that's the the thing to keep in mind. It's not so much the suffering and what what's coming next. Or, oh, I'm so afraid of of this or that and the other happening. But let's keep in mind that when we do suffer, we have an amazing God that has promised us that if we allow it, He can come along with us and He can help us. I think that's pretty amazing, and that's how that has helped me uh, really. Um, on a daily basis, too, just to remember, I'm not alone. I'm not suffering alone. You know, God is with me. And, and I think that probably has helped you, too. Right, Joanne? Absolutely. L- yeah. l- let's... And I just love the, um, I love the quote, you know, one day you will tell the story of how you overcame, and it will become someone else's survival guide. Mm. And I love that. And I incorporate, obviously, how we overcame, meaning, like you use the verse, take heart, I have overcome the world, so mm-hmm. how he has helped us overcome. And and I love that. It's beautiful. Well, let's move on, and on, let's start from where, um, you, a few years ago, you started having lots of health problems that you really right. couldn't get answers for, which is the worst, right? right. Of course. Right. Uh, not knowing what's going on with your body. Um, and... and I think you would agree that that's probably what led you, what led to some of the mental health breakdown that followed, because it's we're all connected. So if yeah. if you can, please take us back to that time in your life. Thank you. Mm, well, it's uh, it's a pretty wild story, so I I won't be able to get into all of the details. But in 2017. And I had already had some mental health struggles. I struggled with insomnia and some depression, and I could trace that back to being put on a medication very early in my life, which was unnecessary. And then when I tried to come off of it, it was um, it really affected my mood, and and I was I struggled to get back to baseline. So I was. It took a year. I went into private practice, um, which I. I'd had a dream to do, and it was a really hard year. It was very draining, um, and 
I started struggling more with some of those some of those things, the sleep and just kind of my it was kind of my mood it just felt like it was off. So I took a sabbatical. Okay. Thinking I would just sit on the porch with Jesus and heal emotionally, spiritually, figure out what I wanted to do next. And the first thing that happened was I got put on a different medication and it was it felt almost overnight that it hit my brain, and I just, I feel like I fell off a cliff. Mm. I um, started having severe panic attacks and anxiety. I stopped being able to recognize myself in the mirror. I'm so I sorry. I was so fearful. I And I would go back to the doctor. I was tremoring, and I had these convulsions, and I would go back to the doctor, and He'd say, oh, these are just side effects from the medicines. Hang in there. Take this medication on top of this medication to get mm. through it. And like, I'm not getting through this. Mm -hmm. And it's continuing to get worse. And so I lost the sense of being in my own body and in my own mind. Like, mm. I, I feel in some ways like I kind of, I kind of lost my mind because I, my capacity to process things and my my body was in a constant state of uh, of anxiety, but not just normal anxiety. Like, I would just shake all the time. Mm. I couldn't sit still. I was restless. I was, it was agonizing, and I kept being put on more medications. I ended up in outpatient treatment. Um, I ended up in inpatient treatment down the road. I had all kinds of other therapies, IV therapies, holistic therapies, and I had... Um, a process where I had my brain tapped with magnets to try to, at the time, bring me out of what they thought was a treatment-resistant depression. And when I was in one of these treatment centers, um, getting put on more and more meds, they kept mm. saying, you know, you're just not processing your emotional issues. And I, well, I, you know, I am a counselor, and I've also been in counseling. I have no shame in saying that. Mm -hmm. And this is different. I feel like my brain is broken. My body is broken. I would just be up all night with my mm. heart just pounding and racing. You could and tell something was terribly wrong. So disoriented. Mm. And, I mean, it was it was awful. I ended up in this detox center, not for any alcohol and drug abuse, but just for medication detox. Mm -hmm. And it just kept getting worse. They were putting me on these different treatments that were holistic, but I just kept getting sicker and so weak. Mm. Having bone pain, I I didn't sleep. It what it felt like for two years. I mean, it was. Are you poor thing? And finally, I um, <clears throat> I found out that I had uh, some mercury toxicity, which was very random. And down the road, I found I had um, heavy uh, load of mycotoxins from mold okay. that I've been exposed to, and. I eventually spoke with my father, who actually is a Lyme disease specialist, and uh, ironically, he just said, you're not going to get better doing what you're doing. Your brain is on fire. You have an infection. Wow. And I just didn't believe it, and I thought to myself, you know, this is outside of my realm. I mean, I'd spent all of this time, nobody knew what was wrong with me, and I was losing hope by the day, by the minute, and I lost my life. I couldn't work. I couldn't engage in social activities. I felt like I, nothing felt real. Wow. Um, and I couldn't drive. I couldn't, I mean, it was, it was just a constant state, and I never felt well, never felt well. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up getting put on treatment for Lyme disease. I guess okay. I guess with Lyme disease on top of the mold and the, the mercury. And um, so all of these things I've learned affected me neurologically and, and psychologically. Sure. In my nervous system and my brain. And Makes sense. So it's almost like you, you were being were, poisoned by all these different things, right? And you, right. You had right. no idea. And I didn't know. Yeah. I just expected the next thing to happen, and I would put my hope in the next treatment mm -hmm. or the next therapy and expect to wake up one day and just feel great. And I've realized it's been such a journey uh, with the, the Lyme treatment and just my whole lifestyle has, 
has changed and just really, oh, I don't want to go into the the deep dive with the darkness that accompanied this, but, you know, there were days when I just had to choose. I mm-hmm. said, I had to choose. I said, I'm going to survive today. Like, mm-hmm. that is my goal. That's my task for the day is to survive. Get through the day. And yeah. It, it, I never, if you had told me four and a half years ago that I would be going through all of this and, you know, lose my sense of self, I, I would not have believed it. Mm-hmm. And so I've spent the last few years um, getting treatment and going through that process, which is not an easy process for anyone who has mm-hmm. had an autoimmune um, disease. I was just having brain inflammation. And so the mental breakdown started early and, you know, has persisted. I, I'm... I'm really, honestly, much better than I have been in years today, and I'm so thankful. Thank God. But I still deal yeah. with this trauma mm-hmm. of going through all of these things that were so terrorizing and so scary, mm-hmm. and that's what I talk about, choosing hope and calling people who can hold hope for me, and yes. going, God, I have no idea what you're doing in this, but all I want to do is be able to help people down the road. Mm, you're helping them now. But, you know, there's been times that I've just doubted that, like, I would ever get there. Mm. And so all of this has been a very frightening process. And with the Lord, this, this fear of, I'm going to fall off the cliff again. Mm. Am I safe? Am I safe in my body? Am I safe in my mind? Am mm. I safe in the world? And dealing with the frustrations of my limitations has also been hard because I have not been able to do my work in four years. I've not, you know, so a lot mm-hmm. of this has been so scary, not knowing what's wrong and wondering if I would ever figure it out. And mm-hmm. I think the Lord for the people who helped me get to a place where I could figure out what was going on with my body and with my mind and my nervous system Amen. so that even though healing has been slow, there are stones of remembrance along the way that my friends and spiritual mentors have pointed out. Mm-hmm. Hey, a year ago, you couldn't do this. Do you realize you just did that? Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, you're right. Yeah, because when you're in suffering, sometimes you don't see the progress. You don't that's see very the healing. True. And, it's very true. That's, and that's why we I, need a support system, right? Because that support system right. can help you to remember. You know, yeah. just remember it used to be worse. It is getting better. Okay, we're, we're going to yeah. have to stop right now for one more break, but we're going to yeah. come right back. Thanks. Okay. Carolina Catholic Radio is an important evangelization tool in daily life. Whether you're in your car, at work, or working out, it's a great time to learn, love, and live your faith. Catch the spirit. Prayerfully consider a tax-deductible donation today at carolinacatholicradio.org. Carolina Catholic Parish News. St. Therese Catholic Church in Mooresville is seeking a director of music ministry. This is a part-time position with 25 to 29 hours per week, reporting to the parish manager. The ideal candidate will be able to maintain a flexible work schedule, including flexible days, hours, and possible evenings in the position of leading the music ministry of the parish. Responsibilities include presiding over weekend liturgies, training cantors, overseeing the contemporary praise band, organizing choirs for adults or children, as well as leading the handbell choir. For specific qualifications, responsibilities, and instructions to apply, go to stthérèse.net forward slash st dash therese dash is dash hiring. For the Carolina Catholic News, I'm Pam Cullen. God bless y'all. Experience the incredible story of the woman who Time Magazine named the most influential Catholic woman in the United States. Born Rita Rizzo, the future mother Angelica grew up in a rough neighborhood in Canton, Ohio. Young Rita experienced abandonment, rejection, and heartache, but God touched her through a woman named Rhoda Wise. Encounter this amazing woman at the Mother Angelica Museum. 
Plan your visit today at MotherAngelicaMuseum.com. Carolina Catholic Radio will be on the road all next week for our Catch the Spirit Fall Pledge Drive, featuring a five-day live broadcast tour to showcase some of the parishes, ministries, and people that shine God's light on our diocese. Be sure to tell your family and friends to download the Carolina Catholic Radio app and click the Listen Now button to follow us each day. Our first stop will be a parish spotlight on St. Mark in Huntersville this Monday from 11 to 1 p.m., hosted by Elza Spady, Gene Whalen and Kathleen Lewis. We look forward to you joining us for our Catch the Spirit Fall Pledge Drive and live broadcast tour all next week on Carolina Catholic Radio. Welcome back to Healed and Restored. I'm Elsa Spade, your host, and today I have with me my dear friend, Joanne Jemsik, and we are talking about a transformation that can come through suffering, Mm -hmm. you know, because I truly believe that when I look back at my own journey, and I think most everyone who's listening to my show knows my journey, you know, I was abused and um, sexually abused and raped at the tender age of eight, Um, so my, my, my journey was a tough one, you know. But when I look back, and when I was writing my book, Freedom Through Christ, by the way, you can find that on Amazon, and all of this last few years of how God has been wanting to use me and my story to heal others, I have realized how blessed I have been. You know, yes, something terrible did happen to me, but God has been so good and had been there the whole time was there with me, never left me. And I think what we're talking about here today is mostly about that. Go back to your suffering and see the hand of God in it. See the little things. Make notes of it. Make notes of that day that you were feeling awful and a good friend called you. Or or someone um, just said something to you that kind of took you from that dark spot. That's God walking in your life. You know, we have to remember that. He's not here walking around. So we are his feet and his hands and his voice Mm -hmm. to each other. And um, your story is beautiful. I know. I I wish people could see you because you just radiate beauty and joy. You're this tiny little thing. Uh, How tall are you? Maybe as tall as I am, 5'1", 5'2". And um, just petite, beautiful, beautiful. And the first time I saw you and met you, I could just feel that. I, you know, it doesn't know you're not the things that have happened to you. Those are just, right. you know, stuff that happens. Those are just like another page in your life, right? And you're ne- not right. allowing yourself to get stuck there. But I do mm-hmm. want to ask you this question. And thank you for being so courageous and sharing so much of your story. Because, again, it's important to share because that are the men or women who are listening to us right now that might have gone through something similar. They can relate to your story. And your story then becomes a healing balm to them. We have to remember that. That's why I truly believe it is so important to share. That's why I felt called to share. And I thank goodness God was calling me to share my story, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, But I want to know, what I want to know is this, in what ways personally do you think God is purifying you through all the challenges you have gone through? Gosh, I... I feel like there's so much there. I think before I got sick, I was trying to live up to this kind of ideal sense of self um, and operating in my own strength and Mm self-sufficiency. And I learned that at an early age to kind of perform for love. Sure. And so when I got sick, I realized, you know, I'm not in control. And... All of those things that I was hanging my hat on to prove my worth or identity, I couldn't count on those anymore. And Mm. so through this process, 
you know, it's been it's been something where I've been stripped of my ability to perform for love. And mm. I've had to really go to a place of where I realize that, you know, God is... Because if I am to be a wounded healer, then it's for God and for His glory and not for mine. Exactly. And... And so I realize when I'm not able to operate on my own strength that his power is made perfect in my weakness. That's so right. His power, his strength, his grace, his mercy, his love, like all of those things that really sustain us. And so as I've gone through what I've been going through and burning away the impurities and the false sense of self, it's bringing me to a place of where I realize that it's it's really about um, just what what he I do I truly believe what he wants to do with my life is a, is a to help other people mm-hmm. again it's it's not about me mm-hmm. and burning off the dross as people say and mm-hmm. burning off to refine, and I, I want to be more like Christ, mm-hmm. and if I'm operating in strength and self-sufficiency, then that's not operating like Christ, because He wants us to rely on Him for yes. everything. Amen and during this journey, I haven't been able to rely on myself. I haven't been able to really rely on medication or treatment, or there's nothing outside of myself that has ultimately than the balm to my soul. Mm. It's not, it has not fixed the problem. And so going to the Lord and just kind of standing on his promises, um, that is a firm foundation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as much as I want to dodge, you know, we talked about transformation and kind of staying in the through and not trying to dodge the process of having to go through. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, what we're going through to get to their side, like you have, Elsa. You went through a journey and a process of healing, and that is what led you to freedom. And then in your freedom, you've been able to help and serve others. And it's the same thing I desire for my own life. Mm. And I, I is, truly believe that that's something that God desires for each one of his children. He desires yeah. freedom. To each one of us, he didn't die. You know, uh, Jesus didn't die that awful death for nothing. He died right. so we could be free. And I think that suffering, it, it obviously, it can bring on uh, so many good things, right? Um, but it takes time because it takes time for us to come out of that mess and, and the darkness right. to be able to look back and see the good things. But I, I do believe that one of those good things which is very important that God wants to get rid of while we're going through this process of suffering is this idea that we are in control. Right. And I think we all have it. And I think that um, the world we live in is not helping us because it is such a a selfish type of world. You know, you don't need anybody. Mm-hmm. You don't need anything. Young people aren't even getting married now. You know, they, if they are getting married, they're, they're deciding to get a pet instead of having a, a, a child. You know, it's such an upside down world we live in that um, w- w- think God comes in and especially with the people that already believe in him. We are believers. We're not perfect people. We are believers. So he knows that when he puts us through something, that he can purify us of all these things. And I think the biggest thing he wants to purify us from is that this illusion that we are in control of our lives. We're not. And we need to be able to say, Lord, take over I am not in control. You are. I want to trust you more. And I think that's what he's doing with you. That's a good word. You know? That's a good word, Elsa, because trust has been the word of the year. It's like, do I trust him? mm -hmm. And 
because I existed in fight or flight for so long, um, you know, this verse um, and from Second Timothy, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love, of a sound mind and self-discipline. And, and I try to control my life because of fear, and mm-hmm. in the middle of that is a lack of trust. And so that's the whole idea of transformation is, is deepening a sense of being able to trust Him. Yes. And that is huge for yes. me, is that, that trust piece. Mm-hmm. And trusting him, and you get even in there. when again the feelings lie. Yeah, like no, I can trust you. Mm-hmm. And looking for ways that he has been faithful versus looking at the pain and the suffering, and where I'm not there yet, or like where is there? Mm-hmm. Right? Like we're constantly transforming. It's this is like a journey. Yeah, it's a journey, it's a and journey. it's going to take us all of our lives to get there to arrive. Right. You know, we're not going to be. Once we realize the intimacy comes through the process, mm-hmm. and we learn to have a relationship with Him that is deeper than the shallow places I've been before. Once I learn to trust Him, and I'm continuing that process of of rebuilding and building and trust. That's something that can't be shaken. That's right. That's and right. That is part of the purification is learning to trust. Yes, Amen. I mean, even in those really dark places. So, I'm glad. I'm glad you agree because that is the biggest thing. We need to trust more. Unfortunately, though, our time together has come to an end. I can't believe this. This went mm-hmm. by way too fast. You're going to need to come back. It's good. <laughs> yes, I'm love to I have would love you. To. Yes, I would love to have you back. Thank you. And I always like to end the show with a few questions and a scripture verse as an invitation Mm -hmm. to my listeners to go deeper into the topic we covered today. So here are the questions for today's show. Question number one, has your life struggles and sufferings brought you closer to God? We need to consider those. We need to go back and think and make a list of how God has been walking through us in our suffering. Number two, our good Lord desires to be a healer and a comforter. But for that to happen, we all need to bring everything to him. We can't keep our crosses Mm -hmm. to ourselves. Are you ready to do that? And if not, what's holding you back? You need to consider that this week. And the scripture verse for you to ponder throughout this week is one of my favorites, Jeremiah 29, 11, 12. For I know the plans I have in mind for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare, not for woe, plans to give you a future full of hope. When you call me, when you go to pray to me, I will listen to you. So that's God's promise to each one of his beloved children. Come to me and I will listen to you. I will answer your prayer, sometimes not in the time or in the way that we expect, but he does come through with his promise. Thank you again for joining me today. And until next week, take good care of yourself and God bless you. Bye-bye. 